Friends, it's not every day that a massive and classic beast of a city builder comes out. But today is in fact such a day. This is Pharaoh A New Era, a remake of the original Pharaoh game which released all the way back in 1999. This time though, we get all new 4K visuals with a modernized UI to make it even smoother and more fun to play and learn. But let's get down to business, shall we? What even is Pharaoh A New Era to begin with? Pharaoh is a city builder taking place in ancient Egypt. And I do mean ancient here. Beginning around 4000 BC, this game takes you on a journey through the development of the old Egyptian kingdom, in an experience quite unlike any other. First of all, Pharaoh has been rebuilt from the ground up for modern systems, and this remake has been given a unique and beautiful stylized look. Just look at how soft and hand-drawn everything looks. The ancient Egyptian time period doesn't get as much recognition in gaming as it could, but here, I absolutely love racing those massive temples and seeing my city grow. But we're not beginning with a beautiful city, no. That's something we have to work for. And trust me, this is actually a game that's as challenging as it is rewarding. You see, in Pharaoh A New Era, we begin with nothing. Or, let me rephrase that. We begin with nothing but a purse of gold to get us started. And we are really gonna need it. Because everything in Pharaoh costs money. The question is where to even begin. Like many city builders out there, Pharaoh is a game about production chains and workers, and creating the least amount of goods and services that will benefit the most amount of people. Pharaoh has to begin with no population either, so everything is up to you to figure out. It does work to use some of like good old city builder logic, however. Starting out with some nice roads, place down housing for incoming citizens, and make sure that your population has access to water and food. The thing with Pharaoh is that everything you build is placed down instantly. And if you have a surplus population and nearby unemployed workers, they will fill the new vacancies. This does require more than you might think, however. For as with any city builder, you really have to think 2 or even 45 steps ahead here. This is because your production chains and worker availability is everything, but so is housing and amenities. Food requires storehouses, and storehouses require bazaars which will offload them and then provide goods for your people. In the same vein, housing isn't just housing. Your citizens will need housing to even live, sure, but each household and their inhabitants actually have needs. In order to keep your citizens from emigrating, meaning you lose potential workers and future tax income, or worse, turn them to crime, you need to fulfill these needs and to keep the houses from falling into squalor and disrepair. This means building wells and places to gather and transport water, access to healthcare and medicine, access to places to get food, and of course, access to religion. Ancient Egypt is nothing without its amazingly unique temples, and Pharaoh obviously includes these classic marvels. They come in various forms, so if you're placing down a little statue in order to please some locals, or a large temple for that extra happiness and to please the gods themselves, your city will be better off for it. That's another thing by the way, actually making people and the gods happy. And let's begin with the people, because they're arguably the most important factor. Like we touched upon, Households need to have the needs met in order to flourish and become wealthier and better households. Doing so does often make them demand even better and more advanced goods and services though, so be aware of that. But what's else is that you can invest in beautification, meaning building statues or raising gardens for the sake of pleasant streets and harmonious environments. This is actually a big part of Pharaoh, and is probably my favorite part as I'm just a sucker for good vibes and green and luscious spaces, and of course those imposing and mighty ancient Egyptian monuments. Other than looking awesome, these things can really spruce up the neighborhood in more ways than one, and if you want your housing to improve, then this is an obvious and fun step to take. Another vital part to keep people happy and satisfied is the part I always forget about oddly enough, which happens to be entertainment. Entertainment comes in many forms in Pharaoh, and includes jugglers, musicians, and even dancers among them. While it's fun to see them doing their business, it's something I tend to put on the back burner because it doesn't feel as vital in the beginning. But trust me, once your people start getting tired of having their basic needs met, they're gonna want to see some belly dancers, and I can't really blame them. If you neglect your people, you're gonna have a bad time, as they might leave your city. Neglecting the gods is a whole different matter though, as offending these guys will have much more immediate consequences. There are several gods in Pharaoh, each providing different bonuses if you keep them happy, such as better harvests. They're kept happy from building monuments and temples to them, 
or by hosting festivals in their honor, which is gonna cost you money every time you do. If you don't keep them happy though, expect some nasty surprises in the form of destroyed buildings or even fires across your city, or plagues. So yeah, the gods' influences are very real here. What's also real is the impact of nature. Your people will get sick from malaria, for example, especially if they work in swampy or fertile areas close to reeds and water, which many obviously will do, since that's where the crops are. This demands that you place doctors and apothecaries down in preparation, but perhaps even more important is the very cycle of the flooding of the Nile. You see, every now and then, the Nile floods, making working on your crops impossible. This means that you need to prepare in good time before this happens, ensuring that some food has been stockpiled and made ready for eating before the month when the Nile floods. In this way, Pharaoh sends a whole lot of uncertainty and regularly scheduled challenges your way, but by raising the right buildings and being prepared, you can always stave off the worst of it. What I like about Pharaoh is that it has a lot of options for you to determine how you want to play. There's a full-on campaign here, taking you from the early days of Egypt, to the heights of the Old Kingdom, and it's actually quite challenging too. Despite looking adorable, Pharaoh never shies away from making you sweat, as if one thing goes wrong, and you're not preparing or trying to mend your mistakes, things can take a turn for the worse quite quickly. There's so much more to think about here than what I've mentioned thus far, as there's even things like tax collectors and police stations to build here, in order to avert crime or finally gain some valuable income. One of my favorite things though, was to get out of the campaign and the mission scene, and just vibe on my own. I loved taking that step away from a set mission, and take the plunge into a custom map where all I could do was just build for as long as I wanted. And these maps are beautiful by the way. My favorite map might be of Alexandria. It's a good mix of that sandy yellow and the lush green, but importantly, it's elegantly divided into various sections by being split apart by the Nile itself. This not only means that there's ample room for growth, but that you have to take the water itself into consideration. Roads aren't the only thing you may use here, as setting up ferry services will make it much easier for your people to get around, and to transport vital goods from one section of the map to another. I kinda like to try to set up one city center in one place, and to make another the center for food production, which they kinda have to be because the fertility is different in various parts of the map anyway. There's even a need to build barracks and train soldiers here, as dangerous may just await on the horizon in the form of enemy incursions. There's also a system of a kind of semi-campaign map here, where you can trade goods with other cities around Egypt. It's more of a mid to late game feature I'd say, but I love looking at this map, and that means a lot coming from a guy who absolutely loves maps. There's even wild animals to watch out for here, so it's always important to keep your citizens safe from harm, even though it's often hard. When everything comes together, Pharaoh becomes a colorful, beautiful, and rewarding experience, and especially unique because of that art style and the ancient Egyptian time period. I personally never played the original game myself, but the fact that I already now find myself loving this game, despite it being a remake of a game from 1999, is quite special, and I think it says a lot about how good this game was in the first place. If you're a Pharaoh veteran and want an excuse to jump back in time to ancient Egypt, or if you're completely new and have been longing for an immersive city builder with both production and worker management, then Pharaoh is a great choice, especially because of all of the modernization features the devs have brought to the game. That was Pharaoh A New Era, probably one of the most charming city builders out there. Let me know your thoughts on this remake or the original Pharaoh in the comments, and thank you so much for watching, and a special thank you to publisher Dotemu for sponsoring this video. Make sure to leave a like and sub to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.